Today we're going over ground control travel trailer electrical leveling system using the one control touch panel. Hey, let's get started. As you can see, we have the entire kit laid out in front of you. Uh, we went ahead and unboxed it for you. So here we have your four C-jacks. They're all exactly the same. And then we have the corresponding wire harnesses for all, the, all of the C-jacks. And as you can see that we have two wire harnesses that are a lot longer, and those actually go on the rear jacks. And then you have the shorter ones for the front. You can see this by these little labels on the wire harness. This one's for your right rear, this one's for your left rear, and so on. Let's move down here to the tongue jack. We have your tongue jack here, your foot pad, and the wi corresponding wire harness for the tongue jack, and your hand crank. Next, we have our C-jack mounting brackets and the bag of hardware for the entire kit. And lastly, we have the remaining electronic components. Here we have the aftermarket manual. Next, we have the one control touch panel and its mounting bracket. With that, we have the CAN bus data harness, two terminating resistors, and the power and ground connector. Then we have the auto leveling control pad and its wire harness. Next, we have two leveling sensors and mounting brackets, along with the wire harnesses. As you can see, one is longer than the other, this one for the rear and the other for the front. Lastly, we have the main controller and its power and ground supply harness. All right, let's take a look at the tools necessary to install your kit. Right here we have two C-clamps. We have wire or string, either one. We have a tape measure. We have a 9 16th deep well socket, two regular sockets, 5 8 and 1 half. We have a 3 quarter ratchet. We have wire strippers, three regular wrenches, 9 16ths, half and five eighths. We have two metal drill bits, five sixteenths and three eighths. A marker of some sort that you can mark the frame. Eye protection, of course. Electric drill. And a floor jack and two jack stands. The installation manual contains specific torque values that you'll need to fasten your mounting brackets, spacers, and C-jacks to the frame. You'll need a torque wrench to complete installation. So the first step of installation is to figure out where those C-jacks go. We do this by making a few measurements on the frame. So let's grab those safety glasses, wire or string, paint marker, and a tape measure. Let's head to the rear of the coach. We establish a minimum and maximum distance for bracket installation by measuring from the center of the rear axle hanger out to 48 inches and make a mark on the frame for the maximum distance and a mark at 18 inches for the minimum. As you can see, we've already made those marks. Now, where do we install the brackets between these marks? We start by establishing a departure angle. That's created by running your string from the lowest point of the rear of the trailer all the way down to the meeting point of the tire on the ground. Now we know that we need to install the C-jack and the bracket inside that departure angle. So what we're doing here is we're measuring between the bottom of the foot pad and the top of the bracket and we're coming up with nine and a half inches. And that nine and a half inches needs to be inside the departure angle so it doesn't go below that line. Here we have the first mounting bracket that we're gonna install in the coach. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna measure halfway over and make a mark on the bracket. Now we already made a mark on the frame and put an arrow beside it. And what we're going to do is we're gonna line up that arrow with this line and C-clamp it to the frame. 
You're going to want to line up the line on the bracket with the line on the I-beam. And also, you're going to want to make sure the tabs on the bracket here are flush with the edge of the I-beam. Make your marks on the frame by using these four holes on your bracket. Now, depending upon the I-frame, you're going to want to choose one or the other of these notches to find your center point. Let's go ahead and drill those holes so we can secure your bracket. Now we're going to go ahead and fasten the bracket to the I-beam using a 5 16th carriage bolt. We'll run the carriage bolt through and put your flat washer on the bolt. And then we're going to fasten that 5 16th flange nut to the carriage bolt. Let's go ahead and remove those C-clamps and repeat those steps on the other side. Now that we have the mounting brackets installed on the I-frame, we're going to want to take this spacer bracket and install it on the mounting bracket. We do this by taking the slotted holes on the spacer bracket and attaching those to the tabs on the mounting bracket. I went ahead and installed the two carriage bolts in the spacer bar. <laughs> now, what I want to do is torque those down to 13 foot-pounds. Now you're going to want to install that center tube and you do this by inserting it into the spacer bracket all the way back so you can insert it in the other one and then you maneuver it so that center hole is in the middle. Now that we have that center tube in the right place we're going to want to make marks on the tube so we can make our drill holes. We'll do that on one side, then the other. Now you're going to want to either drill those holes while they're in the bracket or at another location. Now that we have one side done, we're going to want to do the same thing on the other side. Now that we have those four holes drilled, we're going to go ahead and install that center tube by attaching it to the inner bracket with four three-eighths hex bolts that are three and a half inches long with a flange nut. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install those C-jacks. We do this by using a floor jack or manually lowering the foot pad on the C-jack until you get that C-jack all the way flush up to the bracket against the frame. Then you'll secure the jack to the bracket with six 3 8 inch flange bolts. Now that we have the C-jacks flush with the bracket, we're going to want to line up those holes so we can install those six 3 8 inch flange bolts into the bracket. Four on the outside and two on the inside. We're going to finish this up by putting the last two flange bolts on the back of the jack. Now that we got all six bolts securely fastened to the jack, we're going to go ahead and torque those bolts to 23 foot-pounds. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the other jack on the other side. Now that we have those rear C-jacks installed, we went ahead and installed the front C-jacks for you, utilizing those same steps that you did in the back, except one, and that is you're going to want to install the front C-jack as close to the front draw bar as possible, but not to exceed 60 inches back. And that front 
foot pad needs to be within the approach angle. Now let's go ahead and install those jack harnesses to the jacks and then route those harnesses back to where the controller is. I want you to pay special attention to the labels on the jack harness. We talked about this earlier, but this specific instance, we have the right rear, which is labeled RR. Now, once you run that back to the control board, you're gonna wanna plug that right rear Hall effect wire and power and ground into the proper port on the controller where it says right rear and then do that for the rest of the jacks. So next we're going to install the jack harness to the jack motor. You do this by plugging in your Hall effect wire, then your power and ground wire, then you're going to zip tie the harness to the jack motor. This prevents any damage from the mechanics of the jack or just driving down the road with dirt and debris. Next, we're gonna replace this old tongue jack with the new power tongue jack. And we do this by running the old tongue jack down and getting this weight safely onto two jack stands. Once the weight is on the jack stands, we're gonna to wanna to remove this snapper pin off the foot pad. Then we'll run that tongue jack all the way up so we can go ahead and move that foot pad out of the way. Now we're going to remove these three bolts from the tongue jack so we can remove it from the frame. Now let's install that power tongue jack on the frame of the coach. And we do this by very carefully sliding this leg through the hole on the frame. Now make sure that the front of the power tongue jack is facing forward away from the coach. Now let's go ahead and put those three bolts and secure them to the frame. Next, we're gonna install this jack harness onto the power tongue jack and route it back to the controller. And we do this by connecting the two connectors. And make sure that when you are routing this back to the controller, you tuck it into the frame to prevent damage on transit. Then, you're gonna go ahead and route this back to a 12 volt battery power supply and connect it directly to the battery, making sure that this 30 amp inline fuse is intact and in good condition. Next, we're going to install the rear and front sensor to the travel trailer. Now, it could be that your travel trailer is ground control travel trailer ready, meaning that the actual brackets are already pre-installed. But this travel trailer actually isn't, so we're going to mount the brackets for you. Now we do this by beginning with the mounting bracket that's in the kit and the sensor. You're gonna want to line those holes up to the bracket and make a mark so we can dry fit this bracket to the frame. So we're in the process of dry fitting that front sensor to this particular travel trailer. Now we've determined based on its size that we're going to install that front sensor onto the front draw bar. Now what I've done is I measured the draw bar and made a mark right in the center. Now I've also me measured this bracket and it's five inches so I put a mark at two and a half right in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and match the bracket line that I put on there in the center on the draw bar and match them up. Now let's go ahead and connect that sensor to the bracket making sure that the label on the on the sensor where it says front 
is pointing toward the front of the trailer and the pigtail is also. And then we're going to screw the bracket to the drawbar. We went ahead and installed the rear sensor utilizing the same steps that we did on the front. Paying special attention to the label on the rear sensor needs to be pointing upward and this pigtail needs to be pointing toward the front of the unit. Next we'll go ahead and attach the harness to the plug on the rear sensor and repeat those steps on the front. To install the controller you'll use four number eight one inch screws to attach it to the ceiling or the wall of the compartment. Next, you'll connect the power and ground wires to the corresponding posts on the controller and then go to the other side and connect them to the battery of the trailer. Now let's connect the harnesses to the controller, starting with the C-Jacks. Now you have your power and ground and your Hall Effect wire. You'll plug in for each harness. First we'll do the right front. Next we'll do the left front. Then we'll move over and do the rear jacks, starting with the right rear. Next we'll do the left rear, power and ground and Hall Effect wire. Now we'll do the tongue jack, power and ground and tongue jack interface. We'll plug in the sensor wires, starting with the rear. And then the front sensor. Now we'll be installing the auto leveling control touchpad. But first we need to determine where on the exterior of the trailer we're going to be installing it. So the operator will have full view of the coupler in operation. Once you select the location, go ahead and cut a one and three quarter inch wide by one and a quarter inch tall cutout in the exterior of your unit. And next we're going to plug in the auto leveling control touchpad into the controller. So go ahead and push that connector through from the controller and connect it on the back of the control pad and see if it functions. Now you're going to attach the control pad with four number eight one inch wood screws. Next we will be installing the one control touch panel. First we're going to need to determine where we're going to install that knowing that it needs to be in a watertight compartment. Typically we install it near the entry door. Now we can dry fit the mounting bracket to trace where the cutout will be. We do this by taking that bracket and putting it where you want the control panel and tracing on the inside of the bracket so we can cut that out. We cut a hole in the wall in preparation so we could go ahead and install that bracket with four pan head screws. Now that we cut the hole in the wall and we installed the bracket, now we're going to run the one control touch panel harness and the CAN bus harness back to the controller. And here we have the CAN bus harness that we ran from the one control touch panel and we are plugging that in and then finally, we'll plug in the terminating resistor. Now we're going to connect the harnesses that we ran to the controller 
onto the one control touch panel and install the panel to the wall. We're going to plug in power and ground. Then we're going to plug in one of the CAN bus plugs that's actually the CAN bus wire and then the CAN bus terminating resistor. Let's go over the operations of your ground control, travel trailer, electrical leveling system. Let's get started. So customer operations has four stages, which is exactly like your camping trip. And those are unhitching the unit is stage one. Stage two is auto leveling the unit so you can enjoy that camping trip. But once your camping trip is done, stage three is rehitching the unit to the tow vehicle. And then finally, retracting all those jacks so you can drive down the road safely. So that first stage is unhitching. We're going to pull that vehicle onto that perfect camp spot, make sure the train is somewhat level. Then you're going to want to make sure that you have shore power plugged in. And that's going to give electricity to the unit. And finally, you're going to make sure that your battery has a full charge on it. Now, these jacks are simulating our tow vehicle. So let's go get this unit unhitched. Now you have a couple different options when it comes to unhitching your tow vehicle from your camper. And those are your tongue jack or your auto level control touch pad. But we're gonna focus here on the tongue jack. So you have two toggles on the tongue jack that operate it. First one here is just a light and that'll give you the ability to unhitch and hitch at nighttime. Um, but the other one is your retract extend button. So on that, you can extend the, the tongue jack manually just by selecting that and holding it until the tongue jack drives down to the ground and pushes it off your, your tow vehicle. Or you also have an auto extend feature that you can select by pushing the extend button and listening for the motor engagement once, twice, and then press and hold that for five seconds. And once that's past your five seconds, that'll actually go into an auto extend feature and that'll automatically drive that leg down to the ground and push it off your tow vehicle. Now at the end of this, you might have to press the extend button a little bit to get it actually off the hitch. Now for the last thing, I selected that. While it's in sequence, if you realize you forgot something or you have to, to stop that feature, you can select the auto or retract button and it'll actually abort the sequence. Now that we understand the tongue jack, let's go over to the auto level control pad and actually lift this off our tow vehicle. So here we have the auto level control touch pad and we're gonna need to turn this on and we do that by selecting both arrows at the same time until the green LED illuminates and it's a steady green. Now, we're going to extend that tongue jack down to the ground and lift it up off the tow vehicle. So we do that by selecting the up arrow and holding it. And that's going to actually extend the tongue jack down. Now, the auto level control touchpad doesn't have the auto extend feature built in like the tongue jack does. So you're gonna have to hold it. Now that the coupler is lifted off the tow vehicle, we can remove the tow vehicle and park it at a safe distance. Next, we're gonna to go to stage two, which is your auto level sequence. But before we do that, I wanna point out that before you actually select the auto level button, you're gonna want the front of the coach to be just above level. This is going to record in the system when you select the auto level button, 
So when you go to the hitch height selection in the third stage, it's going to actually return to that exact position so you can hook up your tow vehicle. Now, as you can see, our coach here is actually above level. So let's go ahead and initiate that sequence. Now that we're level, let's go ahead and enjoy that camping trip. Now it's time to leave, so let's pack up and go to stage three which is rehitching. Let's head over to the auto level control pad. Now before you bring your tow vehicle back to the camper, let's go ahead and select hitch height. So you might have to turn it back on by hitting the up and down arrow until the green LED is back lit. Now select hitch height. Now we're going to go ahead and back that tow vehicle underneath your coupler and manually retract this down until you get a good seat on that coupler. Now we have our jack stands here, so when it's on the jack stands, that's going to simulate the tow vehicle. Okay, now we're going into stage four, and that is retracting the tongue jack all the way up. Oh. 
Now that we have all the jacks fully retracted, we can drive down the road safely and get home. The One Control touch panel option gives you two different interfaces to display error codes and system status. You have the One Control touch panel that gives you the full comprehensive list of error codes and you have a auto leveling control pad that gives you system status with a red green LED indicator. Now let's get into the auto leveling control pad. So here we have the one LED on the auto leveling control pad and it is going to be either red or green or off. So off means that the touch panel is either locked or, it's, or the system is actually off. Solid green means that it's active, that you're on and ready to go. Your blinking green means that the jacks are moving in some type of a sequence, whether you're auto leveling or you're moving the jacks somehow manually. Solid red means that you have that low battery indicator, means that your, your average 12.6, it's getting below that, you're gonna to need to charge that battery up. Your blinking red is going to indicate that you have an active error code on one of the jacks or the system. And at that point, then you're going to refer to the one control touch panel. So here we have a list of all of the error codes you might see in the field. So let's go through those individually. So first one, we have excess angle. That basically means that you have an unsecure leveling sensor. So make sure that that's tight on the frame or you're just parked on an uneven slope. So just repark the RV and you should be good to go. Next one is excessive angle. So excessive angle is a little different. That is, if you're in manual mode and you are, are maneuvering the jacks, there's an anti-twist feature built into the system that will stop you from damaging your RV. So if you get that, all you have to do is stop the manual operation and that will reset it. Next one is bad calibration. That just means that you need to reset your zero point. Um, next, feature disabled. So that's a little bit more complicated. That's when you select the hitch recognition and you're perhaps, uh, when you selected auto level originally, when you auto leveled your unit and the unit was below the level point, as a safety mechanism, it's not going to go back to hitch recognition. It will not, um, uh, allow you to hook up your tow vehicle if this if your RV is below level so it's going to pop that feature disabled error so what you do there is you just reperform the auto level at a, a, a higher than level area so you should be good to go or reset the zero point next one is low voltage low voltage means that your battery power has dropped below 9.5 volts and it's going to create a low voltage. What you can do is make sure the wiring is good or just give you get a, either a new battery or recharge that battery. So the out of stroke error, that means that, again, you possibly might have that unsecure leveling sensor. So make sure that that's secure to the frame or you're in a really uneven slope where you parked it. So just repark the RV should be good to go on that one too. Um, next, we have external sensor. You have bad connection or wiring. Replace or repair the connection to the remote sensor. And that is your uh, leveling sensor. Next one is jack timeout. There is a sequence of leveling that the jacks go through specifically, and there's a time limit on it. If it maneuvers past that, you're gonna get that time out. All you have to do is check the disposition of the jacks and then just re-level it. Next one is auto level failure. Again, make sure that that level sensor, leveling sensor is secure to the frame, or this is probably gonna be your more common one is your voltage drop below the uh, 12 volts. Next one is function aborted. Built into the system, if you touch any of the buttons while it's in a sequence, it's going to put it in that automatic panic and give you a function aborted. All you have to do is just restart the sequence. 
your hull power short, the hull effect wiring in the system has a short in the power ground, or the, I'm sorry, the power wire. So what you're gonna do there is you're going to troubleshoot that, and we'll go, the, go over that in a little bit. Um, can't complete level in this location. The trailer's parked on a steep incline during auto level. It's self-explanatory, just relocate the trailer. There are two different methods that you can perform manual override on these C jacks. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the jack harnesses from the motor. Now that we have those jack harnesses disconnected from the motor, we can access the gearbox using a 3 8 inch drive extension and sliding that through the housing until it engages with the gearbox. Now, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise depending upon whether you want to drive that up or down. Now the other method of manual override on these C-Jacks is to use a three-quarter inch socket on this three-quarter inch drive nut on the back of the jack. So you can just run it counterclockwise or, or clockwise depending upon whether you want to move the jack up or down. Next, we're going to go over the Ground Control Travel Trailer Power Tongue Jack Manual Override. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to chalk the tires on the RV for safety. Then you're going to come down here to the power and ground connector on the power tongue jack and disconnect it and disconnect the communication wire as well. Then lastly here, you're going to come to the fuse on the power wire power of the power tongue jack and, and pull that fuse, fuse out as well. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove the electricity from the power tongue jack. Then you're going to want to pull this rubber cap off the top and insert this three quarter inch socket onto the three quarter inch nut and turn it counterclockwise or clockwise depending upon whether you're going to retract or extend the power tongue jack. Let's go ahead and program your zero point. So typically the OEM delivers the unit with a zero point programmed into it. However, there are certain situations that the end user will want to program their own zero point, and that is in the troubleshooting process, or if your eggs are rolling off your counter, you're going to want to set your own custom zero point for your system. Let's go inside the RV, and I'll show you how to set zero point. Now, here's your one control touch panel. Now, there's a few different versions out there. On this one, you're going to select leveler six times until you get that advanced feature warning. Basically, that's all it's saying is, is that you're in an advanced feature and be careful, but we obviously know that. So we then select yes. Now you can see where it's in zero mode setup. On other versions, you'll tap the connected icon six times until the options gear icon appears. Then you'll select that to enter the zero point mode screen. Once you're in the zero point mode screen, the process is the same. Now we're going to go ahead and select enter. And now you have the option of moving the jacks around. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside the unit and make sure that the unit is level. Now you're gonna want to put that level in the doorway flat on the ground and take a look at the bubble and make sure this is where you want it. Now, if you want it to be a little bit high on the front or a little bit back, that doesn't matter. This is your level, not necessarily perfectly level based on the bubble. This is your custom level. I actually want to raise the rear of the unit up a little bit based on how my water drains in my shower. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to raise the rear up, so I'm going to select plus and then press rear. And I'm going to raise that rear up a little bit and make that bubble where I want it. Okay, now let's go check it. 
perfect. Now I have it perfectly level based on what I need. So now I'm going to go back in and set that zero point. I'm going to select enter and you're going to see zero point stability check. Don't move while this is working. And then it's going to say zero point set. And, I, and now your zero point is set and you can auto level it and do all the other sequences necessary. Let's talk about maintenance of your system. Now for optimal performance, the Ground Control TT system requires that you maintain those batteries at full voltage and that you're utilizing shore power. The system voltage can be monitored at the One Control touch panel. This will allow you to see the battery's performance under the load of operation. Then you're going to want to check the terminals at the battery and the connectors at your controller and the C-jacks for corrosion, paying attention to loose or damaged connectors. Next, you're going to want to inspect all the moving parts on the jacks and remove all the dirt, debris, and grease from them. Once you get all those moving parts cleaned up, you're going to want to add a thin layer of white lithium grease to the C-jacks and a thin layer of dry grease like quick lube to your tongue jack. This concludes the owner and aftermarket video for the ground control travel trailer with the one control touch panel.